10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of Lajja TV. I, Vandana Joshal, am your hostess for today. And I think we're coming back with Lajja TV after a long, long time. So here we are again. For those of you wondering what Lajja is, Lajja is India's first forum that gives women a non-judgmental space to be themselves. This is a place where we, with women, by women, work towards the development and empowerment of women across the country. We believe that women can help others. So we, this is a space where they can learn, they can share, they can be inspired, and they can inspire others as they grow. So today, we are here to celebrate yet another woman achiever. We are here to thank and acknowledge and look up in awe at another woman achiever. So let me jump right into today's Laja TV. The past year and a half have tested all of us. And yet during these tiring times, some have shown through and have become beacons of hope and courage. Every Laja woman has done her bit in her own way to support those in need during COVID. But one particular Laja woman received public accolades and recognition and is a COVID helper India certified for being a true hero. She is none other than Prajakta Wadge and we bow down in respect to her. Please continue with the brilliant work that you're doing. Please help others. Please inspire others. And please do reach out to us when you want any help from all of us. Going forth, we're also honored to have as our guest today, a lady who has done commendable work for those facing hardships during the pandemic. She has distributed food ration and groceries to poor, widowed, disabled, and destitute women in villages as part of a Sri Shakti Urja campaign. She also launched a live program called Beat the Blues with her name, I won't tell her name right now, on 22nd March 2020 to elevate stress and depression by spreading positivity of Indian music, spirituality, and culture. She has been internationally appreciated as the, as the first professional female tabla virtuoso in the world. She is a recipient of the First Ladies National Award 2018 from the President of India, the Maharashtra Rajya Sanskriti Puraskar, Z Astitva Award, among many others. She owes the honor of being the youngest and the first female Indian musician to perform at two of the most prestigious music festivals in the world, the Woodstock Festival in 2008 and the WOMAD Festival in 1999, for a mammoth audience of 4 lakh and 1.5 lakh people respectively. Join me in welcoming our guest. She's not online as yet, but I will go ahead and give out her name. Or for those of you who want to see who she is, we will show her in just a couple of seconds. So join me in welcoming Anuradha Pal, the experimental tabla virtuoso, the collaborative percussionist, the rhythm queen, the tabla phenomenon, the trailblazer and trendsetter for societies around the world, woman of pure wonder, the national pride and an inspiration, and the brand ambassador of Beti Bachao, Beti Padao Initiative. There is so many things about this lady that is so amazing. And here she is joining us right now. Welcome, Anuradha. I'm so happy to have you here with us. 
Thank you so much. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be part of Laja and uh, the amazing work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Before you joined in, I've been just gushing over all the accolades that you have and, you know, gushing over all the amazing things that you've been doing. So you missed your introduction, but then I'm oh, sure there. all. <laughs> OK. Yes, when, I was small, when I was small, I was told that I should not listen to praise. Ah, uh, OK. So so that was deliberate. Okay, so that is what keeps you humble. And I think we have, you know, we have started this off with a learning from you. Thank you so much. So let me jump right into the questions. You are known as the first female professional tabla master in the world. And your hard work and dedication has got you these laurels you deserve. But how do you sustain that position? Well, I think, uh, I think it's very important for the values to be right. Uh, when you start a difficult journey like music, particularly. I mean, I would say that for everything, but uh, when you don't belong to a musician family and you have to find your own way around, uh, then it's the values, it's the training, and it's the passion that you have for your work that actually holds you there. Uh, otherwise, there, are many, there were many uh, things I could have done apart from music. I was studying to do, you know, I was studying science, I was good in my studies, and I came from a highly accomplished family. So uh, academics was definitely part of the values and the culture I grew up on. So I could have taken on a science field or a medical field and done stuff there. There were so many doctors in my family. Uh, but the, I think what took me there was the passion and what kept me there was the commitment to that passion, the commitment to go through the odds, the commitment to um, not give up, even when the going went, became difficult. Um, sure. And I, I think that's what keeps me going all the time. It's, it's the love for the instrument, the love for music, the passion for what I do, essentially. That's so amazing because I think that is one thing which, you know, at Lajja, we've always been telling women that, you know, there is this inner spark inside you. It is for you to see that spark and, you know, your drive. The drive has to come from within. And when you have yeah. that drive, then, you know, nothing is impossible. Uh, every dream that you see can come true, but you have to have that drive, that passion mm -hmm. and that fire that you're talking about. So, so very important. Um, yes. Now, after I spoke to you, we connected and then I was going through, uh, you know, all the musicians in the country and reading up on that. Now, I can't, I'm a South Indian, so I've grown up listening to Subalakshmi. We've had Subalakshmi play on the radio every morning. But what I mm -hmm. then realized is that as a culture, we still seem to be restricted by this gender bias when it comes to the world of music and musicians. Uh, is it something that I am feeling or is it really so? And what should we be doing to change that? Well, I I mean, unfortunately, no matter how much we have progressed, there is a gender bias. And I faced a lot of it when I came into the field because I uh, don't belong to a musician family. So I had one disadvantage. And the second was being a female in a male dominated field. Mm. Uh, of tabla was uh, was a complete no no, uh, and it hadn't you know, uh, and wanting to get uh, literally doing all the things that uh, you know the other male musicians, uh, the tabla players and all were, uh, if they were performing and they were traveling at night or they were doing things uh, which uh, which um, were very adventurous by that nature. <laughs> I yes. was, uh, I was, I had a choice uh, to think that uh, I should, uh, you know, restrict myself or to think that, well, if I'm committed, uh, then maybe there is a God out there who will listen to my music and uh -huh. give me opportunity. And I think, uh, you know, I think that's where my parents played a huge role in inculcating uh, that passion in inculcating the discipline because i think it's really important as a musician or as a professional i would say to have discipline i mean right from the time i was a child 
द डिसिप्लिन टू प्रैक्टिस टू थिंक जो हम बोलते हैं चिंतन मनन दैट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट इवन नाउ दिस इज अ टाइम वेन आई एम ट्रूली गोइंग विद इन टू अंडरस्टैंड माई सेल्फ टू वीड आउट to to see you know like a eagle takes out it takes out its uh, old uh, wings uh to fly again uh there is i think an, a, a a desire that we all artists should have to actually grow new feathers uh wow. to grow to grow new music and uh, yeah. to i'm i'm right now working on um growing my music growing and 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 going within it to figure the a new direction for it and i think that passion uh uh came from my parents it's also from my husband uh and also from my gurus uh, who have been very very inspirational and uh, and all the great musicians and people like you know mf hussain who frequented our house who was my mother's guru also uh and uh, so i have been blessed to be to have been surrounded by very great people uh also my grandfather who was an educationist who created 40 schools all over india and on a totally new model of uh, you know shanti niketan and rabindranath tagore's um you know model of education and, the, and literally very very in a sense a precursor to the new education policy and very very futuristic and all that so i think uh, though i didn't see my grandfather but i was exposed to that that to those values and i think that all is what i carry forth in and plus my own a uh, terrific uh, i should say there's a there's a youth student in me that's continuously want that to learn to sponge and to remain um, committed to to f- getting better in my work and there's no yes. there's no room for complacency there's no room to sit comfortably because i read somewhere it was very interesting i was waiting at frankfurt airport and at the bookstore i read a beautiful quote which said if um, uh if you're sitting you know uh what is it if you're not at the edge of your seat you're occupying too much place so wow. <laughs> so i i all i i i believe that that that's really true of all of us who, who are in this very difficult changing competitive world uh yes. you know and if you have disadvantages there are two ways to deal with it you either cry about it or you take it as a challenge and look at that as an inspiration and go ahead and Absolutely. which i think and which i think i think i have always uh, been a kind to if you tell me don't do something then i'll try to figure why you don't want me to do something and i would independently take a call on it i won't be browbeaten you know? wow so th- th- that's so amazing. the fact that you said you know you're a student you are like i th- i think that is the only way we can grow if we remain eternal students whatever field we are from whatever background Absolutely. we have if you have Absolutely. to grow you have to remain grounded and remain a student only then will you better yourself absolutely and that's even same thing with my uh, i mean that's that that is so important uh, to to remain searching you know absolutely. so yes. i'm searching for that excellence i'm searching for something more in my music and very often people ask me um what do you search for do you search for money for a bigger car or a bigger house no i don't i search for my music to be better i search for me to be a better person i search for how i can help or impact more people and like i wasn't given a you know uh uh i you know i think it's so important to to help society in their own in your own way so which is why yes. because i saw the gl- glass ceiling for women and i saw the gender bias i uh, founded a um, uh india's first all female band which yes, is uh, yes. a hindustani carnatic combination band called stri shakti stri shakti um, yes essentially um uh, 
even till now uh, there is no band of its kind which combines hindustani and carnatic music and mm-hmm. also vocal and instrumental and percussion so there's a mm-hmm. tala vadya kacheri which you as wow. a south indian would be very familiar with uh, yes. the whole concept of tala vadya kacheri and i study again that was born out of my intense study of carnatic tala shastra and mm-hmm. uh, uh, my immense uh, i should say not only satis- not only appreciation but craze for carnatic music i mean ms uh, subalakshmi i have had the most incredible i remember i was playing for uh, satya you know sai baba uh, of puttaparthi i was performing there mm. and uh, ms uh, subalakshmi ji was performing after me and mm. uh, after i got off the stage she was standing in the in the wings and i went and took her prana- give uh, you know pranams and took her blessings and mm. she cupped her hands in my you know uh, cupped her my face in her hands and she said very nice tavla and she did like this now oh. this great, and and uh, uh, god bless you and the way she kind of you know the love that she gave me that amma the love yes. that she gave me which was just so much is saraswati incarnate you know and uh, that love that she gave me and the fragrance of her of her hands i i remember i i lived with it even now i experience it and wow. i live with it and these are those blessings and those amazing moments which uh, make all the struggle worth it absolutely you know what i've got goosebumps just listening to that <laughs> it must have been something and uh, like you said it, it's like uh, you know saraswati incarnate she's standing there in front of you um, and to be blessed by that is it's same something. by even by lata mangeshkar ji i mean another saraswati incarnate yes. and uh, and i i was blessed by her and it's just and i played my music for lata ji and she really appreciated my music and the the tracks in fact i must also tell you that this was a a compositional album uh, called mm-hmm. richa uh, which i was releasing at that point and um, it, it was you know i had done some composition of spiritual music of uh, stri shakti of uh, folk music and i've done a lot of collaborations of different kinds and also released several albums of this uh, compositional nature and uh, i played one of those albums for lata ji and she loved it and she said you will you play tamla with me i said wow. <laughs> i will be most honored <laughs> i, I mean i will give my right hand to play with you but unfortunately <laughs> you know unfortunately uh, I, i you know it's not been i had not had that opportunity uh, because uh, you know of covid and all the other restrictions that we are all under so yes, yes. Um, so but yeah i hope that some day in life that happens and uh, i would yes. consider myself most fortunate to uh, play with lata ji and play with uh, uh, all these greats who have been so inspirational and i don't think inspiration is a small is too small a word i think yes. they are so so huge that uh, just a little word a little uh, sentence or a little uh, advice actually opens your mind in a myriad different ways So absolutely it's, it's, absolutely it's you yourself i mean besides uh, stri shakti you have two more bands you you have sufore and uh, recharge uh, now mm-hmm. how different are these from each other uh, one is sufi has a lot of sufi influence and one is like a um, uh, what do you call it uh, a lovely mix of uh, modern and uh, you know contemporary kind of thing so tell us more a little bit more about sufore and recharge too actually a little bit more about sri shakti also because there's so okay. much you can talk about <laughs> okay so it all started actually with um like i said with started with sri shakti and with my love for uh, carnatic music and incorporating the hindustani which because i was first uh, training to be a classical vocalist so i got okay. my initial training the foundation over there so that's how composition is something which i enjoy doing uh, okay uh, uh because also as a tabla player you are very exposed to a, a wide spectrum of music especially if you want to accompany different people or there are of course there are mm. all kinds of people in this world some mm. who want to 
restrict themselves to one genre or the other or accompaniment with vocal or accompaniment with, with instrumental or accompaniment with dance but uh, when i started my career when i started my career when i was 10 10 and a half years old i started performing and i faced um, two re- two two reactions one was uh, utter amazement and the second was why the hell are you here get out uh, okay. and uh, and uh, the people who didn't want me to be there gave me advice about you know you should just play tabla solo and don't accompany because as an a- accompanist you are not given the main artist status you are not mm-hmm. up there mm-hmm. uh, and i i looked at, i don't look at music as an up and down kind of a thing you know i look at it as as teamwork as synergy as yes. as coming together as a collaborative effort and i i said okay even if i am not a main artist i surely am part of that team of that main artist and if i can make a 5% or a 10% contribution i think mm. it would be nice for which that main artist likes then i'm mm. i'm okay i'm okay being mm. an accompany because mm-hmm. me a uh, multitasking or multi roles comes very easily mm-hmm. i can do that very easily i've i've always had uh, i've always enjoyed that uh, okay. where i can i can so if i'm one day or in a one concert evening i can i could be doing a tabla solo i could be doing an accompaniment with vocal and i could be doing an accompaniment with instrumental so uh, or with ghazal uh, and each of these require a different training on the tabla they require a different mindset and a different approach the even the compositions and the bowls that you use are different when you hmm. accompany with different forms like if i play with dance the whole genre yes. of dance has a different the bowls and the phraseology used over there is different and yes. the application of that phraseology is also different mm. the expression or the articulation is also different so yes. uh, how to understand where to do what mm. how to adapt right. okay now you got to do this now quickly change and got to do this so this is something i enjoyed doing from the time i was a child i was i used to go and practice with every every day i had a very tight schedule of a lot of uh, uh, you know early morning first the early morning practice then the school then coming back and again school homework then teach, learning from my guru uh, then going to the concert then probably sleeping for a couple of hours and then going to school early morning and again the same school schedule same or, schedule yes yeah or if when i came to college and i was accompanying musicians and i was going to play with different musicians then it was about training myself to play with all the forms of music so which means again learning learning yes. learning learning and again you know unlearning and learning and readapting and reimagining uh, so those kinds of shifts continuously and always being out of my comfort zone mm. you know so i think uh, uh, all this sort of an exposure to one to all that music uh, plus all those different genres of music and different artists i think also fired my imagination that why don't i make a band which is different uh-huh so all these things led to that you know so okay. uh, uh so when i played when i started doing stri shakti for example when i started the man stri shakti i was completely doing only classical music i was completely mm-hmm. only totally steeped into classical music totally learning that all that then i said okay and i started touring a lot abroad i started performing with a lot of latin and jazz and african musicians started asking me to play with them then i started getting exposed to that then i was invited to uh, um teach in the new england conservatory as an artist in residence which is a very very big honor to have you know as a teenager to be invited there mm-hmm. and uh one of the top schools of uh, america and uh, 
again, I was exposed to that fantastic music and that world music. So that's when I said, okay, wow, this is incredible. So I started training myself on multi percussion. So applying the information uh, that I had learned or the knowledge, whatever I had gained uh, on off the tabla, being such a multi, I should say, of such a versatile instrument, I thought, okay, how can I apply that information mm -hmm. to, to say playing a jambe or playing a darbuka or playing a ganjira or playing a ghatam style, you know, udu. Uh, yes. So, uh, so that's when, and then the exposure of playing with these masters with, you know, of different world music styles. Uh, that's when I said, okay, let's make a band, uh, which is a world music band. And uh, it was very interesting. Uh, we were called um, for a concert and somebody said, you know, do you do fusion? And I said, yes, I do. Yes, and yeah. uh, so he, uh, he said, okay, so this is the date and this is the concert. And, uh, you know, we want something which is really going to get us, uh, you know, so, you know, foot tapping. Now, foot tapping, okay, now that, that was a kind of a tall order. I said classical music, foot tapping, okay, now I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know how I'm going to do that. So I thought very hard and I said, okay, actually, why can't I foot tap? Why can't I get them to move? If I, um, so that's when I, I, I created a band called Recharge. Uh, so actually, okay. we, the, the name of the band came about later. So we went, you know, he we went and performed in that place, and that person, you know, the organizer came and met me backstage, and he loved it, and he said, "Kya baat hai? Humko malum nahi tha, ap itna acha fusion bhi bajate hain. Humko laga ki aap classical hi bajate hain." And so I told him, I said, "Dekhi, classical music has the most difficult training schedule. If you yes. can play classical music, you can play fusion music, but the other way around doesn't work." So. Mm -hmm. You know, because as classical musicians, we go through such a rigor and such a grind that adapting to anything else is much easier, but Absolutely. not the other one, you know. Absolutely. So, um, so uh, he said, OK, why don't you? So when he was so happy and so many people who met us afterwards, he said, Hum to ekdam recharge ho gaye, hum recharge ho gaye. so I said, yeah, that's a nice thing. That's a nice name. So that's how the name of the band came about. Actually, the audience gave that name. I didn't. <laughs> lovely, so, lovely. So, so I can I can just about imagine the kind of energy that would have gone around in that uh, auditorium for people to come and say that. You know, wow, that's yeah, amazing. I and mean, they didn't. They see that's the worst part about. Uh, I think I've always had to prove myself all the time. People always thought, well, I cannot do this when I was. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had to always prove myself harder, which is a good thing, because then I had to work harder. So that's yes. uh, everything, everything, everything as a silver lining. Silver lining. Oh, I completely go with that. You know, I, I always say that there's something, there's something you learn from every experience, every moment, everything teaches you something. Maybe it teaches you the good about something. Maybe it teaches you the bad, but there is a learning in it, of course. Uh, I think all of this, all of this, you are also known as, you know, uh, uh, you have had a tabla jugal bandi with yourself which is again something which is never really heard of. So how yeah. did that happen? And how, okay. I, mean, I, I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> what happened was that I was invited to perform in the Commonwealth uh, Festival in, uh, in um, actually the Commonwealth uh, Heads of State, you know, the Chogam Festival, hmm. where, where uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ji, uh, the ex prime minister of India and uh, Queen Elizabeth, she was there, and all the greats of all the countries, you know, the Commonwealth countries, mm -hmm. the heads of the state. Yes. So, uh, I, uh, I was, I was wondering now, what can I perform for such an August audience, right? And uh, I said, uh, you know, it needs to be something that connects, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have much to perform over there i'm not so much there's not so much time because these are very top people yeah. and so i have to catch them immediately hmm. so I, I i i created a composition which is called talking heads okay <laughs> because they were the heads of the state they were the heads of the state yes 
so i they were they were supposed to be talking so i said talking heads so <laughs> yeah, and uh, and that composition um, was about you know it was about articulation and about about understanding each other that was a composition and so it instantly made a connect with them and they loved it and then i said wow this is actually a good idea i actually hit upon a good idea and i said mm -hmm. okay so how about and that's when i created what is called a tabla jugalbandi with myself uh -huh. okay this is basically where um so you can call it like a serendipity you know where i uh, you know i so i created this well well there are two instruments i think so there are two instruments two tablas and two uh, you know with the tabla solo normally we have uh, a sarangi or a harmonium yes. playing mm -hmm. uh, a lehra a lehra mm -hmm. is basically a melodic line which is uh, uh, denoting the time signature of the tal that mm -hmm. we are performing mm -hmm. and um, so i said well why don't we uh, you know i i i i, I uh, instead of playing uh, the traditional lehra i took the lehra on a piano right wow. and a uh, and a, a piano and a piano and a sarod right and uh, and two rags and i combined okay. the two rags because i used the concept of ardhanareshwar wow and i said well you know there is a concept of ardhanareshwar where each of us have a masculine and a feminine quality mm -hmm. this is deep rooted in our culture and yes. uh, shiva is is the lord of dance he's the lord of tal he's the lord of music hmm. and uh, and uh, as a devotee i said this is dedicated to him so this tabla jugalbandi then i went on so i i present uh, ardhan areshwar on my tabla jugalbandi uh, okay. which is like a dialogue uh, which i have plus which are very interesting stories uh, you know which are anecdotes or stories uh, they could be something from the ramayan they could mm -hmm. be stories i also do uh, something called krishna ke taal okay uh, which is basically uh, krishna ji and his different leelas uh, lord krishna and his different leelas uh, interpreted in a language of rhythm presented in a language of rhythm if you might know aruna sai ram ji hmm. performs a composition which is a very traditional composition actually but she performs it brilliantly uh, mm -hmm. where uh, how you you know the way uh, in kaliya mardan story of Shiv, uh, of uh, krishna ji mm. and how nag is killed mm. right and this was a traditional i think a traditional uh, carnatic uh, compos composer who mm. from whom aruna ji has you know imbibe that and is presenting this so uh, very you know so like that goes in different tals mm, that mm. particular composition goes in different tals and it's you can hear that on youtube uh, similarly in my um, in my ardhan ardhanareshwar or in my krishna ke tal in my krishna ke tal what i present is the different stories whether it's makhan chori or whether it is the way krishna ji held the parvat yeah, mm -hmm. you know uh, or the way uh, he killed kans and uh, you know chanun mushtik the, mm -hmm. the battle between chanun and mushtik uh, mm -hmm. you know and uh, uh, and krishna ji and uh, all these beautiful stories which have which are not just stories uh, they are something that you learn from learn Some from yes there. there's a That's message in them there's a life lesson there there's a life coach right there in krishna ji that you yes. see and yes. and i think you you would probably be one of the early life coaches that we talk about now absolutely i, I mean jagat guru aise nahi bolte hain so <laughs> absolutely so, so so this aspect uh, also i have brought out in my in tal in my krishna ke tal wow so um, so i present on both so this ramayan is uh, krishna ke tal and this ardhanareshwar and in that sometimes on hanuman ji so it just depends how i'm inspired i'm oh, one yeah, person maybe i i'm 
I would say when I was a, as a child, I was very exposed to uh, many beautiful things because of my parents' uh, uh, upbringing and their in incredible intelligence and all the exposure they gave me. And um, uh, so I think whether it was science or arts or sculpture or music or architecture or whatever, you name it, hmm. I... Uh, that exposure was very wide. Yes. And I think so because true. of that, I learn in everything. There's something I see in everything. And uh, a lot of times people ask me, how do you get inspired? And I say, well, it's life. Just celebrate it's life. life. Absolutely. It is so interesting that you say this about uh, your your parents exposing you to so many things because we just I just got off from another panel discussion where we're talking about making children future ready. And this was one of the first things that, you know, came out that let your child see, learn unless he or she explores. There's really not much learning happening because by rote, anybody can do it. You can mug up a book and you can, you know, devour a book and vomit it out just like that but if you experience it then the feeling is you completely know, different music, i it's i feel the the education these days uh, is very informative but it's not formative formative yes the it context is not form, set no and the value setting you know creating values understanding yes. making you the values for life or the principles of life I think that is very is somewhere missing. It's mm -hmm. what they are, the the students have so much information, but yeah. what is needed is formative education, Absolutely. forming their values. And in that context, I think my grandfather again uh, played a huge role because he was a great educationist, and mm -hmm. this was his thought process of okay. how you should make children uh, into formative adults not informative adults. Very true. Very true. This yeah. is such a wonderful conversation. We have got quite a lot of people who have joined in. There's Renuka Gambhir. I think she's somebody known to you. She says, all the best, ma'am. Then there is Kanchan Bharadwaj. There is, uh, uh, he says, uh, sorry, she says, Pranam, uh, Pranam Didi. Then there is Archana Madhusudan. Mm -hmm. Kanchan goes on to say that you are a role model for many girls. Uh, you know, some yes, yes, somebody people are sometimes afraid of. Uh, people can see three Shakti band, but I can see the Shakti, the power in one Anuradha Pal. Oh, wow. That's okay. such a compliment. Then we have uh, Gani Khan. We have uh, Arangam. We have Supriya. Oh, we have so many people watching us. Wow. Um, I will quickly go into you are also the brand ambassador for Beti Bachao, Beti Padao initiative. And I think rightly so. We couldn't have found a better, uh, you know, role model than you. Uh, but uh, how did that come about? And I believe you have also composed something very special for that initiative. Yes. Uh, well, I think like uh, I mean, I have always uh, been a propagator of equality of all kinds. Uh, it's not. It's not about male bashing. It's not about female empowerment. It's about equality. True. And equality can come only when there's education, equality of education and equality of opportunity. Yes, absolutely. Right? And then all the other equalities will follow, whether it's financial independence or whether it's whatever it is. But yes. first, these two things need to be there, education and exposure and opportunity. Yes. Right. So I, uh, when the the ministry actually uh, asked me to uh, compose the Nari Shakti campaign, mm. the Ministry of the Child, and also mm. I, uh, you know, the I was honored by the President of India as the first on the fir for the first ladies award, yes. uh, which was because I'm the youngest Indian musician and the only female Indian musician to perform in two of the biggest festivals of the world. Uh, yes, Woodstock you mentioned Festival Yes. For four lakh fans and uh, uh, WOMAD Festival. WOMAD. One and a half WOMAD. Now, uh, when, so when the president of India gave this uh, huge award to me, along with 
so many other greats. There was, uh, you know, Bachindra Pal, there were um, Salia Mirza, and all the other, you know, great women contributors. Um, Deepa Mehta also. So uh, somewhere, I think, uh, then they said, you know, you know, there's nobody better than you to compose the anthem and also to, then they asked me to actually per perform. There was a yoga day that was happening on the 21st of June mm -hmm. uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, there is a village where they have the highest incidence of female feticide in Maharashtra. Okay. It mm -hmm. is a place close to Sangli. And they said that uh, if you could go there and perform, we are having uh, a huge uh, yoga camp on yoga day. And mm. it will be a good, good crowd. And uh, if you can perform there, then uh, the message will be nice and loud and clear. You know? So I yes. said, sure, I do. So uh, uh, as luck would have it, they advertised it well. And the district collector was so enthusiastic about the whole event and about the fact that here was a girl coming to perform for them and all that, that he nicely publicized it. And mm -hmm. one lakh people appeared for that yoga day, which had wow. never, which had <laughs> never happened. It had never happened. I think in the history of yoga day uh, that they have one lakh people in the as is you know come, and uh, that's when I spoke about female empowerment. I spoke about and I also played the anthem, which I had, uh, uh, which the Ministry of Women and Child had commissioned me to make mm. on them. Mm. Uh, a beautiful anthem where uh, I was actually, it all, you know, uh, it's a, you know, the anthem, the words are also written by me. Uh, mm -hmm. Because um, it, it goes like this, ke khud ko tu pehchan de, khuddari ko chum le, padkar apni pehchan bana, stri shakti ki misal bane. So, but the khud ko tu pehchan de, give yourself an identity. Yes. How? Khud ko tu pehchan de, khuddari ko chum le, which means embrace self-reliance. Self-reliance. Embrace so self-reliance. Right? Padakar apri pehchan bana. Educate yourself and make an identity for yourself. Hmm. Stri shakti ki misal bane. Become an example of exactly. stri shakti for this world. Absolutely. Right, and and like that, and then it also goes on to speak about how sati and female feticide and dowry and all the other rape and all these exploitatory things for women are things that we women need to yes. unite and fight back. Yes, I think what is really important, and again and again, I have always emphasized that unity in unity lies our strength. Yes, whether it's absolutely, country, absolutely. Whether it's as a country, whether it's as a race, whether it's as a gender, whether it's as a community, the problem with us Indians is that we are very divided. Yes. And we are I, me, myself. And that is not the way to become world citizens. We absolutely. have to think beyond ourselves. We have to think, we have a little larger vision for the world. And that can happen, and and only if you if you start looking at. Uh, so so that's when I started to think about, uh, so, you know how I can present this to this one lakh audience. So I I I, I played the anthem for them, and I performed, and so many of them came to me afterwards, and they said, you know. Uh, thank you so much for coming all the way in this very sort of, it was not a very easy place to get to mm. where I was, or where I had to go. There was a train and a bus and various things I had to take to get there. But I did that because essentially I uh, am a nationalist. I'm a very patriotic Indian. It mm -hmm. comes from, again, from my grandfather. Both my grandfathers, my gra grandfather was uh, a freedom fighter. And my other grandfather was in the Indian Army. Uh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So, so it comes from there. Uh, so, uh, 
and my husband and i are also my husband is also very patriotic and uh, so moment the covid uh, problem started and uh, the pm cares fund was started immediately i sent money and uh, a big amount because anything for the country it gets me going and yes. um, uh, uh, even in fact when i had the kargil when the kargil war happened and i was in um i was in london at that time with stri shakti uh, performing we were doing a tour of i think uh, we had 21 concerts in 25 days or something like that it was a crazy schedule and uh, and or uh, uh, that's when we you know at uh, we've seen the news at night and uh, suddenly uh, i heard that uh, you know so when we're seeing the news i heard that flashes one yes. right mm, and mm. 99 that we had won the kargil war and uh, and i was so uh, charged that i told my sri shakti friends and i said you know hey you know we have a concert tomorrow but we have to compose something wow in honor of our country i said but we are concert is tomorrow how will we do it i said well, we have tonight uh. <laughs> you know? wow that's the spirit so, can so we sat up whole night uh and right from writing the lyrics to composing the song everybody my team is a fantastic team i have and i'm very fortunate to have great musicians uh work with me in all my three um uh, groups and yes. uh, and it's But very I think nice that, that's 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 the uh, kind of infectious energy that you have you know when you uh, you know bring out that kind of energy, when there's that aura around you i'm sure the others no, around no, you get no, no. equally charged no i'm not no, i'm not it's... trying to butter you up for you know uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, th- this is something that that i'm getting from this talk so which is why mm-hmm. i'm being completely honest over here but you have also mm-hmm. done incredible work for uh, the tribal folk musicians during this pandemic and yeah. uh, you know uh, while there is so much that we can go on and on and talk about this is something which even when we were having our conversations earlier i realized that you're really looking for help over there so tell us about that and tell us how we or everybody who's watching us can do something for our folk uh, musicians from rural india who really need help Well you know it's uh, coincidentally exactly a year ago in July is when I launched this uh, fundraiser called Kala Ke Sang. Uh what happened was when in March on March 22nd 2020 when uh, the Janata curfew was announced by Modi ji uh, I I decided first to launch a a program which is called Beat the Blues. right mm-hmm. because i knew that people are going to be locked up at home because it was locked down across the world and i said let me do something to spread the beauty of indian music and culture let people be at home and enjoy this let them you know this be an opportunity to for them to connect with uh, something and that way i can probably beat their blues blues is the depression yes, of yes yes and uh, so that program started and it was amazing that people were logging in from if it, it was every evening at 8 o'clock live on instagram and facebook with a new topic every day so whether okay. it was class where you know first i started off with speaking about the tabla and teaching about uh, you know giving a broad spectrum sort of uh, overview on the tal or the hindustani system of tal and mm-hmm. also the quadratic system and the comparison and the differences and all that um uh, and the similarities and uh, then uh when i started getting people from peru from japan from australia from us from india everybody logging in no matter what time it was over there they were logging in every evening at 8 o'clock and seeing that and i said wow there is actually interest so yes. every day i would get out and make a new program and again my team of surasas events which is the uh, event company that i started when i was in college mm-hmm. uh, uh is um, so the team helped me being in lockdown 
uh, doing all the work and still helping me out. So again, like I said, then nothing happens without a team. Nothing happens without all the help you get from others around you. And it, it's not a solo act. Nothing is solo. It's all about, you know, everybody coming together. And uh, whether it's my students or whether it's my team or whether it was my friends, the you know, so many, so many people, whether, you know, people came forward, Lupin Laboratories helped me, Blue Cross helped me. So many friends came forward and donated money uh, for the Kala Ke Sang initiative, which I mm -hmm. launched there in, in July because I was getting these panic calls. Mm. Uh, from musicians that we don't have any work, what do we do? Yahape ye problem ho gaya, yahape ye khane bhuke mar gaye, or whatever. Mere ko school fees nahi hai. Now, personally, I would send money, but how much can I do personally? Oh, I'm okay. also a musician. Yes. I'm also a musician. I also earn off this, and I had no earnings myself. So I said, instead of just complaining about n not having concerts, let me, I'm at least lucky to not have to worry about my next meal mm. so let me go and help the person who has to worry for that and mm. uh, so that's when i launched this campaign called karake sang mm. and it was uh, it was uh, uh, and we were able to raise money very very painfully uh, but they were friends uh, people like Jackie Shroff, Ravina Tandan, Mukesh Rishi, so many active friends of mine. The, even the Ministry of Culture came forward, the zonal centers, because I think, you know, I I, I, I got all of them together and, and they all on their platforms promoted it thereafter, you know. So because of that combined support uh, that I was able to get and my team was able to get, um, uh, we were able to launch uh, this campaign and help. Uh, we've so far helped 350 musicians uh, okay. from across the country, across 17 states. Uh, wow. So right from uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Punjab, UP, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Jammu Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Ar Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Meghalaya, Assam, Tripura, uh -huh. everywhere, Orissa, Bengal, uh, so pretty much the whole of the country. Uh, and of course, Rajasthan. So, so many places we've been able to help uh, musicians and uh, send. So, it was a, uh, you know, so we were able to help a lot of musicians there and uh, the classical and the folk musicians. So, particularly the folk musicians. You know, because they are in very far outback places in Rajasthan, mm. for example, where mm. communication or reaching there itself is so difficult. You yes. Know, it's so hard. But uh, we, because of a lot of friends of mine in those places, I was mm. able to connect with, you know, these are musician friends. And they, mm. in touch, they put me in touch with those who actually deserve the help. So we sent in money, True. we sent in ration to these musicians. And now, in fact, uh, in June, I launched another campaign. Okay. Uh, right. So before before I tell you about that campaign, I'll tell you about something else that I did. So once I did the Kalake Sang thing, I also did uh, what was called uh, uh, something where I wanted to, you know, oh, empower yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, I'm getting a lot of disturbance. Uh, uh, I think that was from my side. So sorry about that. Okay. My kids just yeah. walked into the room. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, and then, of course, in January this year, we also launched another thing, which is called the Atma Nirbhar Utsav, where hmm. these... Uh, folk uh, cla and tribal musicians, uh, classical musicians would have an opportunity to perform. So, you know, with the uh, perform yes. on my platform where they would be paid for it, no free concerts, nothing free because the artist must be paid. They have to yes. get money, otherwise, how are they going to survive? Right? Absolutely. How is that art going to flourish? Unfortunately, art is the last priority for most people. 
एंड दे थिंक वेदर इट्स म्यूजिक और आर्ट वो तो हो जाता है वो तो एफर्ट जो जाता है कि एक लाइन बनाने में एक मिनट ऑफ म्यूजिक बनाने में आपके कितने घंटे रियाज के आपका कितना yes. सोच आपकी कितनी क्रिएटिव एनर्जी जाती है नोबडी फील्स फॉर दैट नोबडी एब्सोल्युटली दैट दैट सच एन अमेजिंग अमेजिंग थिंग एक्चुअली फॉर यू नो दो आई हैव जस्ट पुटिंग इन द वेबसाइट लिंक सो आई वांट एवरीबॉडी टू यू नो गो देयर विजिट दिस वेबसाइट एंड दे हैव अ लॉट ऑफ यू ऑलरेडी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ ऑनगोइंग इवेंट्स there's one that's happening right now i think and then there's one in august which is kalake sang festival so anybody who's musically inclined or even if you're not musically inclined please do watch please help out wherever you can however you can because yeah. you know that is our culture that is our rich heritage that we are talking about over here so and uh, we need you know so we were able to help we are able to help some people but we are obviously short of funds because the the whole country is reeling under this and yes uh, absolutely uh, so i would only request all of you whoever can donate please come on to my website and uh, you know www.anuradhapal.com and over there you would see yeah you can see she's posted that so if you could uh, you know you could donate on that you can volunteer you can help us in whichever way so you know even if you know musicians who need help like right now i am in a process of reaching help to um, the disadvantaged women musicians mm. yes uh, uh this is something i launched in june this year which is called uh, stree shakti urja where mm. urja is literally energy so the food energy. that you want food and mm. uh, so the when those widowed or destitute women or women who are too old to perform uh, or are abandoned by their in-laws or their husbands or whatever uh, mm. uh, through other musician friends who know their condition we are sending food ration to yes. them uh, yes yes so this is happening it's already has started happening in a lot of places in rajasthan we did this in uh, in barmer in shio in um we are going to do, do it in jaisalmer in jodhpur uh, so in several places and we are also extending this i also did this in the tribal for the tribal musicians in um chandrapur which is in maharashtra yes and, uh, yes tine musicians uh, in mumbai so the bar singers the karaoke singers the yes, orchestra so musicians, so many people that, yes. and the instrument makers who ha. are very you know because if we don't have the so the rare instrument makers if they are the last generation so we need to support them we need to otherwise absolutely. that art will die with them so, absolutely so i would say all of you whoever can even contribute a 100 rupees come ahead do that help us it will be a cause which will be worth it you you may not need to have a pizza but you definitely need to have your culture yes you. absolutely absolutely so i have put in the link here and i request and beseech everybody to please visit this website and help out whichever way you can uh, anuradha this conversation is never ending there's so much to ask you so much to learn from yeah. you but um, time yes we have to stick to time so yes we have exceeded it but uh, thank you so much thank you for being our wonderful guest thank you so and much and i would just like to mention one thing before we before we all uh, yes. uh, you know that uh, i will be releasing a new track uh, very soon and that track uh, is based on the beauty of the monsoons the rain the drama wow the, the uh, i also do a composition on the tabla which is called mumbai rain uh, yeah. where you know because i'm from mumbai and i've experienced the rain in different ways yes. uh, you know uh, because my mother was a painter i also saw it visually and my father being a pharmacist and all that i heard it you know scientifically uh, and being a musician i interpreted that 
in what wow. I'm doing. Wow. So uh, all that is what I now, very soon there will be a, um, a single of mine that will be coming out. And, Lovely. Uh, which, which will be on the reins. So look out for that and stay in touch on my website as well as Absolutely. on my social media. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anuradha ji. And thank you to all the people who have been watching us. Uh, I couldn't have enough of you. There is so much more I want to talk to you about. But maybe there is another time for this again. We will sure, definitely absolutely. love to have you again. Thank you so thank much, Anuradha ji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And for all of you moving on, we have just because it is doctor's day today and because doctors have been doing an amazing job all through this year and a half. Let me spotlight a Lacha Growth Platform member, Dr. Jeanal Kuwadia. She's an MD homeopath, homeopathy and she's a consulting homeopath and an EFT practitioner with an experience of over 10 years. She has an expertise in treating children and women's health related issues. Her passion lies in treating mental health related issues as she believes, rightly so, that a healthy mind is equal to a healthy life. She has treated ailments from anxiety disorders, depression, fear and phobia and with the help of homeopathy and EFT. She practices in Mumbai at Malad West. So um, I, I, I know I've exceeded my time. It's been an hour, but I think this conversation with Anuradha ji was amazing. There's so much more to know from her. All of you, I beseech you once again, please do visit her website and help our folk singers, our musicians, our instrument makers as much as possible. With that, I end tonight's Lajja TV. I will see you again on July 15th with another special guest. Take care, stay safe. Good night. Bye-bye.